All right, so now let's talk about the watershed. What, in your own words, is the watershed, Michaela? A body of water that's being drained. A body of water that's being drained. Anybody else have anything else? I'm going to write down what she said so far. Anybody have anything else? Tim? A place where milk and snow goes. Uh -huh. A place where milk and snow goes. Okay, a place where milk and snow goes. Madison, say what you're going to say. Um, okay, drains to a larger body of water, Keelan. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Okay. So this is what we should have. It is a drainage. So it, it does drain water. It's a drainage region. It's where water is going to flow through to drain to somewhere. Where our sources of water, for example, rainfall, melting snow, wheat, yeah, all of that stuff, drains to your larger body of water. what a watershed is. So it separates your water flow. We have watersheds all over North Carolina, all over New York State, all over South Carolina. So it's a drain where your water falls and your watershed actually drains it to your different bodies of water, your Catawba River, your different lakes, your different oceans. But it's where your water is going to fall and it goes through these drainage areas. Any questions about this so far? All right, what's included in a watershed? What the heck am I? Like? What's right though? Includes what? Estuaries. What's estuaries? Salt water and fresh water meet very good. What else is included in a watershed? Keelan is on the ball today. I'm loving it. Huh? Deltas? Um, what do you think? I guess here in some areas, yeah, yeah, okay. I've been thinking of different areas of the world. Um, Tim, peninsula, okay. Yes. Wetlands, good. You want to include all of those things? Those are your natural filters, wetlands are, estuaries. Um, sinks that are within bodies of water where they empty off into those are considered sinks. Our toilets. Okay. All right. What is the watershed driven by? What drives the watershed? Somebody other than Madison. It is the water shed. So it's part of the water cycle, which is called the hydro. Stay with me. Hydro, logic, why is that such a difficult word? Because you're not taking your time to slow down and read it. Slow down, hydrologic cycle. 
i.e. water cycle. That's what powers the watershed. All right, um, looking at your notes, we know that Sugar Creek is actually part of what watershed, everyone? Well, everyone. Upper Little Creek. Upper Little Creek. <laughs> Upper Little Sugar Creek Watershed. I'm not going to tell you what almost came out. All right. Um, it is often confused with just the Sugar Creek Watershed, and that's not what it's called. It's called the Upper Little Sugar Creek Watershed. All right. What watershed does the ULSC watershed drain into? Michaela. Lower Little Sugar Creek. And? Yes. And? And the Catawba River watershed. Yes, we just said what it is. It drains into Catawba and Catawba, it actually um, it goes in both, both areas. All right. Um, what are some Catawba? Some use your vowels. Catawba. C-A-T-A-W-B-A. All right. What are the, uh-huh. What are the two landmarks? Tell me, I didn't say them. You guys took your notes yesterday, there were a lot. Huh? No, I want to know landmarks. Landmarks are places. This gives you a better idea of where this is located. Presbyterian Hospital is one landmark. What else? And if you don't know what Presbyterian Hospital is, that's fine. We'll continue. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody know what that is? Okay, some people knew you thought I said yes. Okay, so now it gives her an idea. Anywhere else? What about the Time Warner Cable Arena? I mean, if you've been to a concert there, or a step show there, or something, or a game, uh, a, a, a Bobcats or now Charlotte Hornets game. All right? Um, that, is there a lot of CIAA events go there? Um, what about the NASCAR Hall of Fame? That is where it, um, that the upper, the upper little feature Upper Little Sugar Creek Watershed is located. So, and also the Bobcat, I'm sorry, the Bank of America yeah. Center. Um, Bank of America. What, um, so this area is considered where? What area? Um, Charlotte. Downtown, uptown Charlotte. All right. Um, besides Sugar Creek Charter, what are some schools um, in the Upper Little Sugar Creek Watershed? Michaela. Pinewood Elementary. What else? There's a voice there. Okay. Dilworth um, was another school. Crossroads. I believe so. Um, and then, what colleges? Nope. Queen's University. CPCC Central. Queen's University. And there's another one. Pfeiffer University. Put that chair down. All right. So now, why does this matter? Why do you think... UNCC, I'm sorry, U, uh, CPCC Central. Um, that's one. Okay, so now let's bring this to our attention because it's not just for school. Why do watersheds matter? Why is this important? Why does this matter? Okay, like. Um, on my paper, I said. They provide places of natural beauty and recreation. Recreation. So natural beauty. Do we all agree that natural beauty is important? No? You, know, you think if you look outside and you see dead trees oh, and dead animals, animals yeah. and no plants, that it would be a happy place to see? Oh, no. no. Natural beauty is something that we all enjoy and we all appreciate. When you see something like, oh, that looks really nice. It's not, you don't want to drive around and see dead stuff all day. That, you're not going to appreciate that. She also said recreation. What's recreation? Fun. When you have um, to be able to go fishing, to be able to go swimming, go outside and play football in a nice open field, a clean field. That's, we all can agree that we appreciate those types of things, correct? What else? Brittany, give me something. not hearing from you. Okay, that's fine. Michaela is on the wall. I know. Give me something else. It supplies drinking water. 
Can we agree that this is important to us? Because we all have agreed that not only do we use drinking water for drinking, we also use it to cook, to clean, to brush our teeth. So this is very important. Good, our plants definitely need it. Can we eat those plants? Some plants to eat? Um, this is nature's way. of draining excess, excess means extra, storm water. So we understand that this is important. Now we made it personal. We realize it's important because we all can appreciate natural beauty. It, it helps liven us up. We all can appreciate recreation. We understand that we need clean drinking water, and we need this to be possible because if we didn't, we would be in a what? Drought or, not a drought, a flood. It drains excess, too much storm water. We would be in a flood, and we don't want that to happen because if we have Stormwater flooding, not only is it the water that comes down from the sky, it's also the water that's going to come up from the right. sewer. Oh. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. And that's what happened in, in Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. They not only had too much water coming down, now that filled up in their, in their um, drainage uh, areas, and that drainage area had sewage water in there, and that came up. So not only it wasn't like, oh, you're just swimming in water that just came from the sky, that shouldn't be too bad. It's unhealthy because it's contaminated because now you have waste water in that, that's mixing all together. Yeah, now it's become a little personal and understandable why that's a big problem. All right. In a watershed, what happens on land, land affects the creeks. creeks. And in turn, what happens in the creeks, creeks affects the land. land. So we must take care of our land so that we can take care of our water. We must take care of our water so that we can take care of our land. Because even in the tidal areas, when that water comes up and it does flood over, or that groundwater is being used, it waters our land. That land is important to us because we not only we get our food from that land. Your animals, when you eat meat, they eat the crop of the land. That's important, correct? Yes. All right, we need to then take care of our land because that land is what infiltrates that water. If that land's not good, that water's going to pull what's on the land and infect the water, which then is going to in turn infect us. You understand why that's important? Yes. All right, moving on. What and what are common ways that land and water affect each other in a watershed? I just talked about it. If we mess up our land and our water, that's called what? Pollution. That water, that polluted water comes up, that's considered what? Yeah. Flooding. So pollution and flooding are common ways. The types of pollution and the amount of pollution in a creek are usually influenced by what? Well, the land around it. I just discussed this with you. So make sure you put the land around it. The land around it is what is affecting um, the amount of pollution and increase. Now, just to give you an understanding again, how that works. If you have a body of water and you have land, the land, and you have houses, development. And maybe that's just a beach or it's just a body of water around. If that, what comes up from that land 
go into that water, and that water can flood onto that land, bringing that down. Do not move yet. Which brings that down to the water, so we understand that to be true. Lastly, watersheds that flow directly into drinking water is called water supply watershed. And then watersheds need additional protection to improve water quality. water quality and protect what's in nature though? Animals. Animals, which is wildlife. This helps us understand that we are not the only organism on this earth. These things, organisms, need to be protected as well. We don't want dangerous species. Thank you.